Welcome to the Hank Sisko Show. Uh, today we have a special guest, and I mean special. And he brought some exhibits here that are going to be very interesting. So don't touch the dial. This is really interesting. This show, the Hank Sisko Show, is about getting to know you and getting to know about people in Norristown, people who have a talent and uh, have something to show and something to talk about. And uh, so today, I'm going to do less talking because I got a little frog in my voice, and the, I don't know. That's a pretty tough situation with me when I when I can't talk too much. So, my guest today is Timothy Hawksworth. Now he's an artist and he's a teacher, and I met him at a forum uh, by the uh, Norristown Initiative at the uh, the old Sacred Heart Hospital, and uh, he gave a, a, an outstanding presentation. I says I have to get this guy on my show. So he is so knowledgeable. And, and, I, and he's an artist, and uh, you know, I says, my God, I said, uh, he's a good man. And I said, and he's, he was born in Ireland, right? right. So, uh, can I use the word Tim, or are they Timothy? Tim what is do good. you use? Tim. Tim? Okay, yes, Tim. Go for it. Tim, tell me about yourself. I, I, you, I, heard, <laughs> I heard you say that you were born in Ireland. Tell me all about well, it. Well, yes. The United yeah, States. I grew the up. Boat or <laughs> what? What's the story? Oh, no, there was a, an airplane. Uh, yeah, I grew up in Ireland. I. Uh, Went to college in Dublin, and then I uh, emigrated in 1977. So I've been here over half my life, so I'm deeply confused. And uh, you have a studio, right? I have a st uh, an art Tell building. me about that. You bought the a art building? building? Yeah, we have a, an art building in Norristown. It's uh, 22,000 square feet of old uh, factory building. It used to be a Halloween costume factory. We converted it into studios, so there's 23 artists working there. We have a workshop space where we teach, where I teach. I get artists uh, and students from all over the country. They come no, to, to they Norris. Come, they they come, come to Norristown and study. Um, we have a gallery and an educational outreach program, which is a nonprofit uh, organization called Pegas. And Pegas uh, puts on shows of uh, of contemporary artists, uh, and it's in the process of seeking funding to do more with the schools and to do more educational outreach and to set up a scholarship fund so that uh, uh, people can take the workshop program who don't necessarily have now the resources. Now, your building is on Washington. Now, for, for people who are not familiar with it, if you go down Main Street, okay, and you turn south on Hawes Avenue and That's you go it. two blocks, is Washington. You turn left, and yeah. at the end of the street, yeah, you turn left on McKinley. We're right on the McKinley, corner. McKinley, right. Yeah, and the entrance okay. is in the back. Uh, you'll find directions and more about us on the website, which is uh, N-A-B-A-R-T-S dot com, okay. nabarts dot com. That talks about all of the three things we do. Uh, can, so, can people come down here and take yeah, a look at Yeah, come see artists? us. You bet. Yeah, yeah, we have shows. We have an opening down there on April 24th uh, of two local artists. Everybody's welcome. Well, that's what, on April 24th? Uh, yeah. Is that Saturday, a Saturday? That's a Saturday afternoon. Yeah, what time? Between uh, 3 and 5. So okay. there's food and art, and uh, a lot of the studios will be open. That's a good time to visit. Uh, I'm there most days, and the gallery's open from 10 to 3 during the day, during the week. You can come down or, there and yeah. tour. Or uh, if you call us, uh, at, you know, we can make an appointment to meet you there other hours. So, Good. yeah. And your phone number there is 610-272-8484. I know right. I was there with Dan Kelly, the uh, yeah. writer, reporter yeah. for the Times Herald, and, and the lady there took us a tour. Yeah. And I couldn't believe it. I was never in an art studio with all kinds of paintings and yeah. Exhibits like you have some exhibits here, which I'm going to ask you to, to explain. Like, like this picture over here. I mean, you're going to have to tell me something about this. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> I, got you. Uh, I look at it. I don't know. Yeah. You know? Well, you know, uh, I'm going to tell you how I came to painting because I was a kid on right. a farm in Ireland, and I saw paintings by the Englishman John Constable, and I said, I want to paint like that. And I started doing these paintings, and we put a bell out by the gate, and the tourists would stop and ring the bell. And they'd come down, and we turned the little uh, cow shed into a gallery. And I sold stuff to the tourists. And I was like, hey, sold, uh, I what? sold paintings to Painting. the tourists, paintings of the countryside. Like what, what paintings? Oh, you do? Uh, Landscapes. Like you would have loved them. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, and then. Do you have any dandy lines there? <laughs> <or anything? laughs> but hey. I'll tell you what happened. Uh, I, went, I went to college, and I studied history. And you know, you could walk in, in, in Dublin, in Trinity College, Dublin. Dublin yeah. Ireland. And I remember walking through the hills in Wicklow, in Ireland, where I grew up, and you'd come to these villages, which were ghost towns since the time of the famine. 
and you're walking through these villages and you feel all kinds of stuff. You know, it's spooky. You feel yeah. stuff coming up in you. And then you go and you're studying the history. And the history is trying to really get at the facts. It's sort of trying to be analytical. And I never felt that I could really, un the understandings I was getting from history never t matched up with the understandings I got walking through those villages. And at the same time, when I was in college, Ireland was actually almost heading to civil war. It was like disintegrating. What years were that? About? That would have been the 70s. In the 70s. You know, it was scary <clears throat> times. Uh, and I remember feeling like all of the politicians on both sides were lying. Nobody was actually really talking straight about what was going on, and that there was this undercurrent, which was really dark, and it had all kinds of cruelty in it that was all over the place. And uh, I was with a group of people who were artists, and we felt like painting was actually a way Expressing. Of, of getting down to some kind of bedrock where you could actually trust some information. Uh -huh. So this idea, and uh, painting works through the body. You move the hand, it's a gesture, it's out of the body. So this idea that you could actually get down to painting about what it really feels to be human, that idea uh, seemed like a, one way to approach the chaos that was going on around us. So um, for me, uh, painting isn't just about you know, doing a bowl of flowers or, you know, it, it can be about flowers. Yeah, flowers yeah. are incredible <clears throat> things, right. but it's about accessing these broader things. Now, any one of us taking a walk, We'll daydream. At night, we'll have these dreams. You know, in your dreams, you're like unbelievably creative. Uh -huh. You know, in your dreams, you're, you're such a good director that you sometimes jump out of bed, the ending is such a surprise. Yeah. You know, you're a great storyteller in your dreams. Everybody is. Yeah. So creativity is so much a part of us. It's in our nature. It's actually in our nature. Uh, and it's, it's in the nature that surrounds us. You know, if I smash my finger, it'll grow back. Now my conscious mind, I have no idea how it does that, but my finger knows how to grow yeah, back. Right, right. So the creativity and intelligence that's in nature and in our nature is incredible. Right. And what an artist can do is by paying attention to dreams, to daydreams, to half thoughts, by really sitting still enough to let that information start to come up, mm -hmm. they can access this broader knowledge than the conscious mind. Now, Seamus Heaney's an Irish poet, and when he got the Nobel Prize, he stood up and he said, I credit poetry with having a restorative effect between the mind center and its circumference, between this factual, conscious ego self that constantly thinks it knows what it's doing, and this other mind which is so much bigger, which flows in and out the half thoughts, the dreams, this whole thing that's part of us as human beings, to have a healthy relationship between those two things Dreams. is a wonderful thing so that you're, uh, you know, although you're, you're a good citizen and you look after your neighbor, at the same time you're allowing yourself to dream, to move in and out of uh -huh. different states right. so that uh, <clears throat> it's like, I think, it feels so great to paint and to look at paintings because it's like looking at the ocean. When you go down and you stand by the ocean, you're like, you just are, and that, that dreamy self and the conscious self, they just flow together. Yeah. And nature does that. Yeah. So a lot of people just want to just, but it, it's a relaxation to watch the ocean. And there's yeah. nothing there but just skyline, yeah. sun, and you open clouds. You up. Yeah. So when you get to drawing, I'm not avoiding your question, you know, you asked me about this drawing yeah, and I start uh, talking that, that about all like this somebody, stuff. Uh, you see, I'm somebody to had a half a load on it. <laughs> yeah, what yeah. the heck happened here? <laughs> 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 well, you see, when you start drawing, um, and again, there's two things about drawing. One is well, let me ask you one thing. You talk about the dream and get back to that dream. You like that you, dream? Do you have now? a Do you have a notebook like, uh, by your bed when when you wake up and you boom and write it down? Write stuff down. No? Yeah. Well, I I I I, I sometimes yeah. Say, a lot of people. I think that's a, a great way to remember dreams. You know, I find that I'm working so much in the studio working at my painting that that stuff is is all, is, all, is coming out and I've got a pretty good connection with that side of myself just from doing it. And anyone who does it will get that. Uh -huh. I mean, the amazing thing about writing or painting is that if you sit You're still creative. every day... You're talking about you creative, do it, right? Yeah, I'm talking about doing it, you right. know, actually doing the work, that this stuff comes. 
So now, what what the story here now yeah. with this? Okay. Not to cut you off. I'm going to yeah. keep bobbing and weaving with you. You know what I mean? Well, I, I, I know the Italians. You know, know. Know. variation of punch and jab, <laughs> left hook, right hook. Uh, but, boxing it. You know, you got I'm so much knowledge, and, and you know, we have uh, a yeah. half hour to do but it. But if you look at this, come you'll on, tell see, me about it. You'll see, uh, you know, if you keep looking at it, you'll see images. There's horses in there. There's boats. The images are far back, and I suspect a lot of you will be saying, "But it's so messy." I mean, yeah. what's he doing? Uh, and I'll tell you, the, I used to, there was this uh, pub in Dublin, and you could go to the pub, and these lorry drivers who drove meat all over Europe, you could hitch a ride. And I used to go to Spain with these, I'd hitch a ride to Spain with these truck drivers. And I remember, this was a big thing for me. I remember it was Franco's, Franco was ruling Spain. Was yeah. Yeah. Dictator. Yeah, a dictator. Yeah. And there were these political movements who were illegal because they wanted democracy. Right. And I didn't know anything about them, but they would do this graffiti all over the walls of the city. And if they were caught, they'd be shot. You know, they, so it was a dangerous yeah. thing to wow. do. Wow. What he had here in the United States, boy, they'd, they'd run out of ammunition. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. So, but I remember looking at this graffiti, this marks on the wall, and I didn't speak Spanish, I didn't know the political party, but what amazed me was those actual marks, they held the attitude of the people putting it up. And there the was tension getter. Yeah, they were, so that the actual mark, the actual physical drawn mark held the anger, the, f the furtive glance up the street, everything was in the drawing. You know, people look at handwriting, and they read handwriting. Yeah. And they can tell a lot from it. The same with drawing. Every mark you make actually records your attitude. So it's like, whoa, you know, I can draw more than a flower. I can yeah. draw everything about me. In fact, when I'm drawing, I'm drawing more than I know. Right, right. So that's pretty cool. So that brings in, you know, so there's not just pretty marks. There's all kinds of marks. You can be a fly fisherman who throws out a whoosh, huge mark. You can be a little a little long-legged spider on the water doing tiny marks. You can do elegant marks. You can do pissed off marks. You can do, you know, the Spanish say that swearing is essential to your dignity. No, one encourage people to yeah, swear. Some, some but there's didn't... times in your life when yeah. you have to say, what the heck, and yeah. stand up. Yeah. And, you know, and that kind of uh, assertion, that kind of uh, coming to the point, yeah. those kind of marks are really important for me in drawing. Yeah, so in this, in this drawing, there's all kinds of mark making. Uh -huh. I, I thought I saw the Santa Maria there. This, it, it's uh, a, it's well, a boat there, right? Yeah. It's a boat. Is. I is. see a horse. Yeah. I see a, a horse up, up top, on the too, top. and a guy yeah. on a horse. I think I yeah. see a leg. Yeah. Now, the longer you look at a, a drawing like this, the more you'll get. The, you know, it's uh -huh. like you look at it tomorrow, it'll be a bit different. And, uh, you know, uh, that a drawing is, what, what is a drawing? For me, basically, it's a record of somebody having an experience. So if I experience <coughs> something I never had before when I'm working, and I'm like, oh my god, look at that, and this thing comes yeah. back at me out of the drawing, and that surprise is recorded, then I have something. So I'm always looking yeah. for the hair on the back of my head to stand up. That's a good sign. Well, you know, you're talking about, your, you know, how about your mother and father? Did they encourage you to do this? Or how, how some, tell, tell me something about you. Okay. Yeah, well, um, we had a, there were no painters. My, I had an ancestor, uh, J.M. Singh, who was a playwright. He wrote Playboy of the Western World. So there was an artist in the family history. So being an artist was okay. I mean, uh, he was, when he was alive, they all thought he was crazy. But he was OK yeah. by the time I came along. Uh, my, my mom and dad knew nothing about painting. My dad kept saying, They thought you were a little wacky, too? No, they thought it painting? was good, but they kept like, uh, my dad kept saying, well, maybe put a sheep in the front, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but they were, no, they were very supportive. But yeah. my dad did say to me, he said, get a degree. Get, <laughs> you an, know, education. get an education. <clears throat> and right. I think that I'm really, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad I did, yeah. and I think if somebody's interested in, in painting and drawing, uh, I think it's a mistake to think that you should go just to art school. You know, no. get an education, right. study everything. It's like you need to be educated. Right. You need something to say right. as well as the tools to say it. Yeah. So do both, you know? Yeah. Um, but don't limit yourself to just studying art, because a lot of the way art is taught and a lot of what's happened in art ends up talking about art, and it's okay. like, art is actually a way to talk about life. So you need educated artists. I'm big, I'm a, I teach at the academy, so I'm, uh, I'm supportive of art education, but I believe 
you need a much broader education. Yeah, I, I, the so, fact that, that you know, show business, uh, it's artists, you know, like yeah. the, the, the Art and Cultural Center, they're going to have a show there uh, beginning uh, tomorrow night. Uh, and, uh, you know, there, there's theatrical uh, talent there. And here in the other end of town, you've got this painting, you know. And, you know, my parents, uh, they, they believed in uh, have singing, music, and all. Yeah. And I, and I, I took violin lessons for 15 minutes and, and quit because they, they, I had yeah. to read. I thought I was just going to start playing. <laughs> and my brothers took singing lessons and all. Now, one of the biggest surprises, my daughter tells me she's going to art school. Uh, it's private lessons. Yeah. Uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, Netta, uh, Netta Lafours. Uh, yeah. She's an artist, and she goes there. Excellent. And one of the happiest things for her, she showed, look, Daddy, show me something charcoal. And then yeah. she says, oh, water painting. So yeah. now she did her first oil. Yeah. Beautiful, you know, yeah, like yeah. a sunset. And, yeah. uh, you know, That's so great. I'm so proud that yeah. she's following up, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's great. Yeah. So what, what kind of advice you got for young, you, you, one thing you said is make sure you get an education. Yeah. If parents I mean, want, maybe want to steer them. What should they do? Well, you need, I mean, mostly for someone starting out and they're finding they have this thing that's pulling at them, this voice that's saying to them, you know, oh, this is something here. Yeah. They need to, they need, firstly and primarily, they need to be doing it as much as they can. They need to draw everything. Draw their right. bedroom, draw breakfast, right, draw the right. draw If you want to write, write. Yeah, right. do it, do it. Right. That's the main thing and that's always yeah. the thing. Yeah. And in a funny way, that's the hardest thing. It's much easier to talk about being an artist than to actually do it. Uh, the other thing is to really look at paintings uh, in the museums and books and look at the ones you love. You know, don't go to the ones you don't like. Don't worry about it. Look at the ones you love and look at the guys or the women who learned from the guys you love or the ones who taught the guys you love. Spread it out from right. where you like it. Go to what excites you and what interests you right. and then just look at them. Spend time with them. Painting takes time. That's, you know, the, the old Frenchman say, to understand the painting, you need a chair. Right, right. So now introduce my friend here. Oh, your ancestor. That's, is that real or what? What's the school? No, that's, What's that's rubber. But it's, it's oh, a okay. replica of Cro Magnum Man, who's one of our oldest ancestors. Uh, so I have this around. I mean, I like it. Uh, but uh, when I'm teaching, you know, we have live models and uh, beautiful. You have live models? Uh, yeah. Don't get carried away. Whoa. This is art. So we have two. Up there. <laughs> we have the live models working, which is a wonderful thing for people to draw because it, you know, it talks about beauty, it talks about vulnerability, it talks about life, right. and in the same time in the room we have the ancestor floating around. We have my helper. Um, I'll talk about this first. But the the ancestor, uh, you see. Uh, well, T.S. Eliot said, um, when you write, when the word goes down in a poem, uh, it fuses the most ancient in us, the oldest thing in us, with the most modern. So at that moment that the word resonates down through your body, or as the drawn mark resonates down through your body, the oldest memories, the, the, you know, the guy in the cave scratching out the deer hoping he'd get breakfast. Uh, and you today in the 20th century just put down the, the mouse for the internet. Those two things are fused together like that. Uh -huh. So having these memories and having this sort of resonance around uh, brings things up in people. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, you know, our memory, our cultural memory is huge. It goes way back. I mean, I remember. I remember my kind of goat legs running on the mountains as a kid. You know, we, you, any disease you had, your body holds that memory. Yeah. The Chinese believe we hold our ancestors in our bloodstream. And I know some of my ancestors are very strong in my mind for no apparent reason. People I never met, right. but from stories. You know, stories. The, yeah, yeah, and I think that's true of a lot mm -hmm. of people, that there's this one grandfather who keeps sort of yeah. appearing in your life. And right. uh, so... Uh, these memories are much bigger than me, we maybe think. Right. And I, when I'm teaching, uh, I'll refer to my helper over here. Yeah, show me. Uh, uh, what's his you name? Know, well, what do you have a name for him? Well, Henrietta, because it's a woman. Anyway, is it a male or female? It's a woman, and it's plastic, so nobody's nobody's right. actually. Okay. I thought we're it was not a hospital. We see. <laughs> <laughs> no, we haven't been grave robbing. But anyway, we have her there in the studio. Not only because when you're drawing the model, it's good to have the bones, and the bones are incredible things. I mean, you know the joints, all of the complexity of the body is incredible.
but also uh, when you start to change things, say you're drawing the figure and you change uh, the head to that of a wolf, just change it and see what happens. And suddenly the hair in the back of your head goes up and so, you know something else is, is accessed. And the, the amazing thing about drawing is it's like exploring and not knowing where you're going. When Rembrandt was doing his heads, he would, uh, the marks he made to make up the eyes, they're ridiculous. They're the last marks you would think of to make yeah. up an eye. So when he's doing it, he'd push the paint around. And at that moment, he didn't know what he was doing. Yeah. He was looking. That's what creativity is, going where you haven't been before. Oh, okay. So whenever I can get people surprised so that what's happening on the drawing is like, whoa, I don't know where that came, whoa, yeah. then you know that's right. creativity. You're cooking. Right. If you're drawing something and it's just a problem, how do I draw the coffee mug? You're not cooking. You're studying rendering. And that's right. a different thing. Right. And you need to know how to render, but it's not the creativity. So things like this and the juxtaposition that surprise people, that, that's what I like, because then it's like, you know, Suddenly, I, I the, had, the energy shifts. I had an opportunity, my wife and I and family, to visit Italy. You know, my, my parents told me, you know, something about the town and, you know, the church they were born, or married in. But there's so many nude statues, like uh, the statue of David, you know. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm famous. Okay. Yeah. Nude body. So you, you have... Uh, an artist, uh, your art, you, you have yeah, I mean, this is models an and all. Yeah, right? there's a thing that happens sort of in the States. Nothing obscene or anything. No, this is strictly art. Yeah, I mean, that's a thing. You know, Mark Twain, he went over to Europe and he saw Titian, one of the great painters from Venice. And T Titian was, yeah, it was pretty sensuous. You know, he was painting these beautiful women in oils and he was, it was, it was a very sensuous thing. And he was horrified. He thought it was a scandal and that it would actually really uh, hurt people to see this kind of yeah. thing. Uh, but the artist's job is a celebration of life, right. you know, and it's, it's really a moving and an embracing of it. And the, you know, the beauty of the human body uh, and the vulnerabilities of the human body are a huge part of that. They're not, you know, it's, and it, it, it isn't actually, you know, the, the distinction between uh, art and pornography is very clear. You know, some art, uh, which to me is, is really sort of social research, will try and investigate the difference and will use pornography, but actual using and celebrating the human body right. is not at all pornographic. Now it's, look at this, all this publicity about the, the Barnes, what is it, the Barnes um, Museum? Yeah. They want to move it to Philadelphia and all. Yeah. And, uh, I know Judge, uh, Judge Ott, a very yeah. personal friend of mine, what a decision he has to make. You know, well, you know, it amazes whole, me. What amazes thing. me. Tell me something about it. You're an artist. What's yeah, I'll tell you on? my point of view. Okay. <laughs> you know, this guy Barnes, he has, you know, he has the money. He buys these paintings from these guys, a lot of soutines. Well, so what, what, where did he get his money, this guy? Uh, I think he was a doctor. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, he, so he, he buys these paintings from these artists. These artists do these paintings. The, artist, the paintings are from the artist. They're not from Barnes. He had the money. He bought oh, them. Oh, okay. And he put them up. And he hung them up in a very specific way from his own head, and he left in his will that he wanted that. So I don't know legally, but as an artist, you know, the fact that he has hung Soutine by Cezanne, and there's a little bit of this over here, is nothing to do with Soutine or Cezanne. It's to do with his attitude to how he liked to decorate his house. Oh. Now, why... Oh, do, why did, just, in other words, he, he had these in his house. Yeah, his house is hung he in bought a bought them and decorated his yeah, house. Yeah, and he had a whole theory about how his decoration was... Uh, a way of s understanding art, and he wanted to teach that. And legally, he set it up in his will, and there's a whole legal question, which I'm yeah. not addressing. Right. What I'm addressing is that the artist who painted that painting, that painting is full of meanings. It's yeah. reeling with meanings. And if you hang it up in a certain way with a certain something behind it, you're focusing on one meaning. And why should the uh, attitude and the wishes of the collector have pr predominance over the attitude and wishes of the artist. The artist wants their painting hung so it can be experienced fully by lots of people in different ways. So for me, it's like, who do we, you know, who, who's, who's, who's the source of this? Who do we have to respect in this? And for me, the thing we have to respect the is artist. the art, the art itself coming from the artist and not the collector. Collectors now get a huge amount of play in the art world, and it's, it's great. Collecting is great. But 
it's you know it's, it's the it's, artist the guy it's that the did art. all the work <laughs> did all the well work. the artist too let's not forget it's the almost guy. like like the cook the cook gave yeah. it, and and the waitress just goes over and she gets a big tip and a poor cook but back the, the funny thing about artists <laughs> you know and i've known some really great artists the greater the artist is are we doing all right on now time? go ahead go ahead yeah the the um the greater the artist is, the humbler they are. The old, yeah. the, the old monks uh, in Ireland doing this illumination, they would say, I didn't do that. The Holy Spirit came down and moved my hand. Oh. This, I, you know, and every time you get a painting that works, it's like, I don't know where that came from. It's like oh. your dream. Yeah. When your dream really, you have a dream. Some people have dreams that just tell them something absolutely right. profound about their life, if right. they think about it. It's like this dream is actually telling you you know, you should change careers, or you should marry this person. You know, huge decisions that, and the dream can be really clear. Where does that come from? Whose voice is that? Yeah. So this idea that an artist is actually a receiver rather than a creator, yeah. I think is, for me, that becomes more and more evident. So, you know, so it's the art, it's the paintings, and they come from who knows where, you right, know? Right, right. You know, the muse, the, the spirits, dreams. the dreams. <coughs> You know, that, that, that comedian used to tell us that I dreamed I was awake when I woke up, I was asleep. <laughs> that, but, uh, but, you know, yeah. that, you know, what you're doing in Norristown is, you know, I think a lot of people don't know about it. Even my daughter, yeah. she's, she's yeah. painting and all, and she didn't know anything about it, but she's going to know about it after yeah. watching this show. And yeah. I'm going to see that she gets down there and meet you. Yeah. And I want as many people that I know to meet you because you're a very knowledgeable person. I, I can't well, believe that you're here in Norristown and, and you have a, an art studio that people are not aware of. Well, let me tell you, you know, this is uh, the same thing with our, our, our art and cultural uh, yeah. uh, theater there. We got to get people to come in and see yeah. what we got here. We got a, a Montgomery Hospital. We got we got a lot of things going on here in yeah. Norristown. Yeah, I oh, know. I'm, I'm really happy to be here. You know, I call it Florence on the Schuylkill. Yeah, what do you call it? <laughs> oh, I, I like that. I like that. I like that. Uh, what's his name? The county commissioner, he said Norristown's a jewel, you know, because we're between Gettysburg and Philadelphia, and that is, a, you know, there's a, yeah. a flow of history. Uh, so here you are uh, coming in with this. I, I couldn't believe when I went in your building to see so much, a big room like this, uh, yeah. you know, with art and paintings. Oh, and, serious you know, business, serious and business. And you notice I don't have a tie on because, you know, yeah. I, I never saw an artist with a necktie on. Yeah, so no, you it, don't, it's you, fatal. You, you come in, look, you have to paint with all well, your, you, you come right from it. the studio, right? Yeah, yeah. So, we're, we're, we're a working bunch. All right. <laughs> and, you know, is there anything you want to tell me that... Uh, well, uh, you know, yeah, I got, it's... I got uh, about a minute or so. I'm, you know, just... The, for the painters, you know, to be in Norristown has been a, is such a great thing, and, and uh, we've just uh, hired someone who's going to run the Pegas, the nonprofit part, which is really going to work on uh, developing that relationship, so people will know more about what's Good. going on and hopefully right. come on in. So well, okay, let me tell you now. The building is at 619 West Washington Street, okay, and Timothy Hawksworth, Tim. It's great. No, thanks, you know, thanks for having me. Uh, when I heard you speak the first time, I said, I have to have him <laughs> on my show. And let me tell you, I've enjoyed this half hour or so. And, oh, me uh, too. and I hope that uh, our listeners uh, will get, in, get to see and meet um, Tim and stop up at uh, that studio. Okay? So until we meet again, keep bobbing and weaving and left hand high, stick and move, and keep your trunks off the canvas. I'll have no problem. Okay? Thank you and God bless.